The Lawrence Massacre, 1863. 150 unarmed men and boys killed in the Unionist town of Lawrence, Kansas, by Quantrill's raiders, a Confederate guerrilla group led by William Quantrill. Lawrence was targeted due to the town's long support of abolition. Grant v. Lamont has been amended to challenge HB 6667. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. Now, as of June 28th, my understanding is that the lawsuit challenging Connecticut's assault weapons ban, which is labeled as Grant versus Lamont, is going to be amended to also challenge HB 6667, which went further to ban firearms that are classified as others and the pre-ban exemption that was created with SB 1160. Now, this is once again good news because as Grant versus Lamont moves forward, it's going to encompass both laws that have been passed, SB 1160 and HB 6667, in one case now i just want to jump in real quick and give you information here and as a side note i have actually met mr green he's a great guy and i'm hoping one day we'll i'll get a you know interview with him to be uh, broadcasted and we could talk about this but i'm gonna come right into here as you can see this is the opening page here with grant and and then other plaintiffs versus basically the administration lamont tong so forth and so on but I'm going to come down to here, Plaintiff Eddie W. Grant Jr. Plaintiff Eddie W. Grant Jr. Grant is a natural person, a resident of Meriden, Connecticut, an adult over the age of 21, and a citizen of the United States. He has, let me move down one page, he has been holder of a Connecticut pistol permit for over 30 years, is legally eligible under federal and state law to acquire and possess firearms, ammunition, and magazine. Grant is a member and supporter of Plaintiff. Connecticut Citizens Defense League, Inc., CCDL, and Plaintiff Second Amendment Foundation, Inc. I want to come down to here. Air 15 platform firearms are among the firearms listed or described in Connecticut General Statute 53-202A and effectively banned by Connecticut General Statute 53-202C. Grant owns no firearms listed or described in Connecticut General Statute 53-202 prior to its amendment by Connecticut Public Act No. 23-53 uh, because he is prohibited by Connecticut General Statute 53-202C from buying or possessing any such firearms. Grant would like to all able to be able to lawfully purchase and possess one or more of the firearms listed or described in Connecticut General Statute 53-202A for defensive purposes. Grant also owns firearms that were previously classified as others, firearms that legally were not considered pistols, revolvers, shotguns, or rifles. He intends to acquire more others in the future. Connecticut Public Act number 23-53 now prohibits him from lawfully purchasing any such firearms and from lawfully purchasing additional others other than those which he already possesses. Grant's interest in acquiring such firearms for defensive purposes stems from his mother's accounts of her fight for civil rights in the Deep South. As a black woman growing up in 1950s, 60s Georgia, Grant's mother had recalled to him the church burnings and racially motivated killings experienced by her family and friends. Grant understands that such attacks were repelled by, in large part by private ownership of defensive firearms. Grant feels that Connecticut General Statute 53-202A slash C and the subsequent amendment by Connecticut Public Act Number 23-53 gives criminals and attackers a strong tactical advantage over him. He feels that criminals don't follow gun restrictions so they can possess and carry any type of so-called assault weapons they like. As a law-abiding person, Grant wants to be able to lawfully possess and defensively carry such firearms as well. Grant would like to purchase, sell, and possess one or more of the firearms listed or described in Connecticut General Statute 53-202A and a subsequent amendment by Connecticut Public Act Number 
but he's prohibited from doing so by Connecticut General Statute 53-202C and the risk that the defendants will enforce Connecticut General Statute 53-202C against him. And then it goes on, of course, to talk about the other plaintiffs in this case and their position. Uh, let's come out of that. So there it is. This is actually very important because we're, we're literally tech tackling two problems at the same time because if the case has stayed or this filing has stayed the way it was, SB 1160 will be challenged. If we win, we still have to contend with HB 6667. The two cases being combined together as one complaint is positive. And we're hopefully going forward, we're gonna see how this case evolves. And with the Bruin decision, the state knows it's going to lose, but seems to have no issue wasting millions of dollars to do so. But it's not their money, it's our money. And that, and that should worry us greatly. But, great news, great news, and let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below, and as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.